the machine becomes his face. Over time, it's like the human is gone. <laughs> like, that, that's right. Right. <laughs> that was actually my job. I remember back in the day when that was like a new technology, and we're like, oh my gosh, this yeah. is this video card of an anti yeah. you know? So now no one ever thinks of it. I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs>
like, that was like probably the first time that I was really just like, no, like this is, I mean, this is not how I want to do it, at least. You hear things come out of your mouth because you're just brain dead because you're mm -hmm. like working on like, I'm like rendering this painting. And yeah. It was just, it was like the funniest thing that stuck out to me. Very early on with 3D printing, we had this little 3D printed prototype thing. Mm -hmm. And my uh, son came in, he was probably like two at the time. And he like picks it up and he's looking at it. And I, I remember him calling it the prototype, which mm -hmm. was kind of funny to hear it. <laughs> <two> year old, <laughs> you know? And I turned around and he's like got no pants on. And I, <laughs> and I remember saying like, you know the rules, you gotta, <laughs> you can't play with the prototype if you don't have pants on. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what am I saying? <laughs> when you come out of the office and you're like, well, I'm just out here to get a coffee and like use the bathroom or whatever, and they like want to show you stuff, and you're and like, um, I've realized that for me, like, I've kind of have to like up my my dad game of like, switch that off. Mm -hmm. Yes, show me your painting. Right. <laughs> you know, like show I, me your little drawing. Working freelance really requires you to prioritize your health and your family's health over the creation of your next piece. Otherwise, there probably won't be peace. You're not by default a good parent, you know, like it, it yeah. it's, it is the call, it's like the wake up call, like I should be, Yeah. you know? So bringing it to the art side is like, well, so then that means um, maybe I need to like trim a little fat. And how it's difficult sometimes to take necessary breaks throughout the day or just throughout the year. I don't think we're wired that way. I, th I think we have to learn it. Yeah, you know? the, the, to be able to stop. I think artists are just more impulsive. I never stop working on it, you mm -hmm. know? And I'm not saying that in like a, I never stop working on it like an athlete that's so great. It's right. Like, uh, I, I never stop being crushed by my own guilt. <laughs> <laughs> the very nature of an artist is about just letting yourself go and just creating. So to be able to have that freedom of expression while taming yourself and having self-control, I think takes some serious practice and wizardry. You find it hard to not come in here when you're not supposed to? I, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always, it's my default, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, even, even when I'm watching the kids, like we'll take the iPad and go outside and like paint something, you know? Yeah. There's a certain culture of creative and artists where it's like, you know, oh, this is my life, you know, kind of thing. And I'm right. just like, I, I hate that, you know? I, I've, I've, I think that there's like a truth in it, yeah. you know, that whole like, there's a kernel of truth and everything. Yeah. Like I do recognize in myself that like, if I didn't make stuff, I would like wither away and die. You know, like at least my soul would die. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Eric walked me through the steps of creating the tanks from just an idea to drawing, to digital paintings, to 3D modeling, to finally something that you can really experience and hold in your hands. The refrigerator, you know, everything's got it. I got it all, all the components out of it. So I had to put lights back into it. There's a carbon filter up top here. This is all from like greenhouse kits. This is hooked up to freezer portion. So it's got a thermometer down in there and then it's got two outlets. Real simple system basically. If it's too high, it pulls air out with this and blows it out here. If it gets too low, then it runs that other fan because that fan will generate heat. See, I'm trying to keep it at about 80 degrees. So there's the ones that are drained off. You can see there's the wet resin still in there. Hit these with a paper towel and to get as much out as I can. And then I'll use alcohol to clean off the rest of it. That'll break it up. I learned some of the techniques that Eric has used to make his 3D modeling much more efficient. Anti-aliasing is, so like say this is your pixel, that's the edge of the pixel, it's square. You've got like a 3D shape. That 3D shape runs like this. It has to kind of cut in these pixels. Right. Think like Minecraft. Now anti-aliasing would just be to put another pixel here that's blurred that's like halfway between those two. So it makes that edge look smooth. And so what anti-aliasing does is it puts a little bit of gray in between the two so it'll like half cure. So instead of getting that full step, you get kind of like a half step. So anyway, that has anti-aliasing. <laughs> the first few months of printing is like figuring out how your printer works, how your resin works. And then you'll find out like, oh, you do a different form, like you do a different model type or you put it on the build plate differently and weird things happen and then mm -hmm. you start to figure those things out. After the tanks have been printed, it's time for some prototyping. So this is the early version of Pravda. You know, you can see we squashed the proportions, we made this like kind of chubbier. I think that makes it a little bit more accessible. Yeah. This is closer to a typing, a typewriter. And it's funny how many things it's like once you 
redesign it, you go back and you're like, why in the world would I ever have done that? This was the first one we modeled it in VR, brought it into ZBrush on the desktop, and um, just made some final changes to get it ready for print. This is one of the early ones uh, of the redesign because you can see I cut the material away. Once it's been tested into its final form, it's ready to be painted. Start with a, a black prime like this. Like just the white would just be pointing down and this basically had a fake lighting. And then do white on top of that. Now the reason for priming is, you know, this is a photo sensitive resin. That means that UV light is gonna harden it. And so if you just leave these in the sun, they will get super brittle. And fall um, apart. Yeah, basically yeah. just shatter. Um, and so you've gotta protect it from UV light. That's, I just figured, you could either your UV clear coat or you could just prime it, which, you know, if anyone's gonna paint their models, they're, they're just, gonna prime it anyway. Right. I mean, we have started selling models that are unprimed if people want them. Some people have maybe different ideas about how they wanna prime it. So one for the, to seal it so that there isn't any continued UV curing. And then the other reason for quality assurance, it's just a whole lot easier to look at this and see glitches. You know, not to brag, but we've gotten pretty good. So I don't think we really need to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm looking at, they're looking this over and um, I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> Fantastic tanks aren't afraid to laugh at themselves. Yes, it is serious work, but it's also not, and that's kind of the point. They're hard workers and have put an incredible amount of time and care into the project. If you're gonna do something, do it well, and that they do. I'm sure I've got some uh, some failed ones up here. We kept a lot just to kind of keep a record. This was one of my favorite failures. And so that's what you would call a cascade failure where it's like it start the st failure started here if you have a failure at one of the lower steps lower rungs it's going to continue so here's a good example there's quite a bit of a failure and yeah that's just, <laughs> you know something went wrong like way down here i think some of these are pretty hilarious you yeah know, like yeah i like this to me has got like this like French beret yeah, that's, kind of looking thing, yeah. you know? And I got to see the behind the scenes of some of these other projects that he was working on with all these really cool character designs. Dude, so some of these you can only get by doing certain things in the game. I still like them, you know? I mean, obviously I can look back with hindsight and go like, well, maybe I would have done this or I would have done yeah. that or whatever. But like, I, I know what went into that game and uh, I think these guys, you know, th this line of characters, um, I'm happy with how they all fit together. This was a fun theme. Just, I, I really like those characters a lot. This is uh, this is like kind of added to the list of projects that one day I want to do. Yeah. And um, some of these are tangentially related, like all the characters are related. But the worlds are, um, I could see them being in the same lineup, but they're not necessarily, they weren't designed together. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> like I mentioned before, Eric lives in the middle of nowhere, so there were only two options for food. And luckily, they were both delicious. Speaking of which, <laughs> you want to eat some lunch? Sure, yeah. We got two bacon cheeseburgers for under $10 at this Amish store. Then we headed to the coffee shop nearby where Eric actually had some artwork on display. While we ate our hamburger, we discussed the complexities of doing what you had decided to do, regardless of maybe not having the energy or passion for it now, the the seeing through of things. Where sometimes I will organize things rather than do them. And often what happens is I'll, I'll decide that there's this order, like this hierarchy of things that need to happen in order for me to be able to work. Um, and it will paralyze me for like weeks until eventually I say, screw it, we're jumping to step 10, you know, mm -hmm. like skip one through nine, and then it works out anyway. Anything other than the bare bones thing you just have to do uh, seems more desirable. Like any other excuse gets in the way of that, 
And so, while, while there are like real things that come up and real disappointments, for me, it really is like what we were talking about earlier about like if you decide to do something, you actually need to have some kind of barrier to block everything else out, and that is the thing that you're doing. It really is the simple things. Yeah. You know, just yeah. like, well, I want to do this. Okay, well, how badly do you want to do this? Yeah. You know, like more than hang out with your friends. It's something that has been particularly difficult for me recently, but it's nice to talk to Eric and hear that I'm not the only one that feels that way. And Eric puts it really nicely, and his encouragement is to just put your hand to the plow and just do the work, just keep moving forward. It was like that whole thing, just like, well, is it important? Is this what we've decided we're gonna do? Are we gonna put our hand to the plow and finish plowing the field? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or are we gonna like just talk about how we wish we had planted those seeds, you know? As we washed our burgers down with our coffee, we got down to the nuts and bolts of the conversation. Fantastic Tanks. This is when I really began to learn the origins and the history of how Fantastic Tanks started. Like the first sketches were about five years ago. Almost all of these ideas start as like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if, right? And you sketch things out, whatever. And it's usually the, usually the ideas that I circle back around to and go, okay, that's still funny, like a month later. Mm -hmm. That's still interesting. Then they, I start to develop those a little bit more, and then eventually it'll, it'll become like, okay, I think this could be something. I was doing these sketches. I thought they were funny. I liked the character, the characters that were emerging. I started to paint them with other artists around, mm -hmm. and it resonated with those people. Fantastic Tanks started out as just an idea, and then to paper, and then to digital paintings. A theme is the way that Eric describes the whole thing. Came a theme. Thought, well, I really like this tank idea, and I'm curious where it's going. Um, I'm going to do Inktober's. I'll draw every day, but I'm going to do tank stuff. It's all going to be in that same sentiment of like goofy, sarcastic, satire. That was just an opportunity to take time to really focus on it and see where it went. And it went pretty well. Eric had learned 3D modeling as a younger artist, but didn't necessarily stick with it like he did painting and digital art. So when the university he was going back to was also interested in 3D printing, he was able to do an independent study with them. And it only made sense for him to use Fantastic Tanks as the training ground for this new art form, as he had already created many of the concepts and designs for it. I already have all the drawings and, and paintings. I'd like to develop this idea. I just need to produce some 3D models. And that was about the time that I decided to take time off and go back to school. So I did an independent study where I said, look, I'm gonna research this and I'll show you everything that I've learned. They wanted to do that, so they were interested in it which also meant that they got printers. Uh, they didn't have a program up and running, so like I was the only one using them. It was mutually beneficial for them. I think the, the weird part was, that, you know, my uh, to-do a senior show that's like, like fine art paintings and then like a couple of toy tanks, you know? <laughs> like kids really loved it. You know? yeah. I think there were a lot of parents who were like, what in the world, you know? That's when Eric really began to dig his heels into fantastic tanks. Then things got like way more, um, strategic and planning, we've formulated the LLC. This is the team behind Fantastic Tanks. Eric Elwell, Specialty, Chaos Agent. Adam Barna, Specialty, Voice of Reason. Joelle Mulinba, Heavy Support Unit. Timothy Pichelli's, Tank Fashion Designer. Eric has begun finding his people. He's a vision caster. He creates worlds and characters and ideas and is able to bring that to his crew and delegate and listen for feedback in the areas that his team members really excel at. We coincidentally ran into one of Eric's friends and a member of the Fantastic Tanks team, Joel. All the sketches and all and a number of uh, uh, prints from the team. Hey. How you doing? Good, how are you? You got a minute? All up for the day, dude. This is, uh, how's it going? Hi. Joel, Joel, this is Caleb. Caleb, Caleb. Nice to meet you. How are you? Joel's always been involved with the planning of that time. So it's been like either practical, these things need to be done, so, you know, pick up a paintbrush or something. Yeah. Um, and also kind of looking at the big picture, like, why are we doing this? You know, is this the right audience? Is this the, you know, like, yeah. understanding our audience, that sort of thing. Yeah. Adam's much more of the, well, who's gonna buy this and how are we gonna make money and, and what's gonna cost and that sort of thing. And I'm more of the, um, you know, what's the big picture of the, you know, what's this world gonna be like? What's the feeling that I want people to have? What's that? 
philosophical. Philosophical, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. A good team has that and the person that's like, I don't care about that. How are we going to sell this? Right, yeah. <laughs> or how do we make that? Or how do we take that crazy idea and communicate it? Right. Hey, it was very good to meet you. Likewise. Have yeah. a good one. Yeah. See you around here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a lot of good audio or video of Joel the day we met, but you should go check out his art because it's also really incredible. Eric talks about competing values amongst the teammates. It's funny, just the, the, I can think about some of the conversations, you know, where I'm going off on some tangents, like, you guys gotta rein me in, and Tim goes off, and I gotta rein him <laughs> in. And then, it's very good and very healthy, and, and sometimes, I wouldn't call it conflict, I would call it like, there are competing values, and they're all important, and so it's good to have those different perspectives at the same time. Competing values that are all important in getting to the best possible result. When you have a good idea and a group of people that care about it, it really can go anywhere, and it all, after that it's just, okay, what what is this group of people able to accomplish, and then how is the world going to, uh, you know, Receive, that. receive it. That's one of the things that makes Eric stand out to me so much as an artist is that he doesn't necessarily care about telling the story as he does about the story being told. Like when I, whenever I make something, like when I made Fantastic Tanks, I had no intent for it to be anything. Like I wanted to make the characters and the world. And I, I kind of think of that as like, th this is the interface that people can understand. How do I interact with this idea? Um, or with these characters or with this world. Uh, and so the interface never mattered to him. Yeah. And it should, because you, at some point you have to make it. He really wants to find the best avenue for his audience to hear the story in whatever way is most connective. I didn't care if it was a video game or a comic book or whatever. Um, I just wanted to bring this world in front of people. If you don't remember, 2020 was a pretty hard year to get through. Some people took up knitting or cooking. Some people took up COVID. I took up toy photography. People wanted to know what it was. Toy photographers didn't ask that question. What is this? They just saw cool toy. I can take a photograph of it and yeah. make it look cool. That's what I want to do. They didn't have to fit it into like, oh, how do I play this game? Yeah. Or what is the story behind this? Because they're storytellers. I fell in love with displaying and photographing action figures after watching an episode of Adam Savage's Tested. Featured in this episode was a photographer named Sergeant Bananas on Instagram. I saw some artwork by Sergeant Bananas. Johnny, and I just thought it was awesome. You know, just like he had Star Wars toys and it was like, yeah, had like the practical effects and stuff. I think he was one of the first toy photographers I found too. This is actually how I found out about Fantastic Tanks, this project from Eric. I was following a photographer well known on Instagram as Black Series when I saw this image and I thought it was so cool. And to my surprise, when I started digging a little bit, it was Eric's tank. We got connected with Isaiah, uh, Black Series. He's, and, um, I love his stuff. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. We sent some to him and then that kind of took off in this other direction. And I, if I had to analyze it, I think we, what it was, the tour photographers didn't ask that question. What is this? All of Isaiah's work is really cool as well. So I highly recommend checking that out. They've just got these kind of crazy, non-functional paint jobs that are they're just in character. And I didn't want that to just be like, what's Eric gonna do next? He wants the idea accessible to people and like toy photographers to use your own imagination with the tanks. I never wanted that. I always wanted it to be, here's the platform, you know, here's the kind of the world. People are invited to do their own renditions of it. That's not to say there aren't specific ideas behind each tank that they create. Ultimately, Eric cares about you using the tanks as a platform to create something yourself. Eric talked with me about the heart and the careful thought behind Fantastic Tanks. So we have this philosophy of, um, it's called active de-escalation. Acknowledge and engage with the culture and the conversation in culture. And our goal is to de-escalate. Acknowledge that it's there and um, give you some space to breathe and um, maybe, maybe even poke a little fun at ourselves while we're at it. But we're not, we're not saying, we're not ignoring it. If you're maybe still confused about what Fantastic Tanks is, I thought this was a great summary of what the intentions of Fantastic Tanks is. It's almost like potent satire, but delivered in a way that's really accessible. 
-hmm. you know? Like, it's funny, it's cute, but it's tanks, you know, but it's like, it's got this violent theme, it's got this cultural narrative, cultural um, uh, analysis kind of going on behind it. Mm -hmm. And yet, I don't, it's not that. It's not just cultural commentary, right. uh, social commentary. It's, it's something funny that you can have fun with and engage with and share with friends. And so that's always this, like, where's that balance between, like, Ooh, too much, uh, too little, you yeah. know, like, or that's just, that's like slapstick humor, but this is like dark humor. <laughs> the last stop of the day was to his alma mater where he still had some of his art on display. What's it like to see them? I'm glad yeah, to have like your art displayed, knowing that people are seeing it every day. It's a background thing for some people, but for others, I'm hoping that it will get their wheels turning. College is a focus on fine arts more than, um, applied design and like production part mm -hmm. and so that's one of the things that we're kind of trying to communicate through this is like your art doesn't have to just be like an abstract painting on the wall that like people you know like think yeah. about and, th and that's fine it has its place but yeah. like that's not the only thing when talking about the live streams that eric started doing during the pandemic he said that he was really looking for a pure outlet of his creativity that wasn't pressured by any outside entity, client, or contract. The weekly live stream, that was one of these things that I started. There was no plan to like grow or get an audience. The whole point was, I'm gonna set time aside to paint something that has nothing to do with my commercial work. I want to paint because I want to paint, right? Like not because I need to learn something in order to do a job, in order to make money. Right. Because um, I have time for that. Right. That's what I do all day. Right. And so this time was just like, I'm just kind of playing and just kind of whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And to, and to look back and go, okay, when someone, when the college asked me to put some work together, 90% um, of it came from that time. It's interesting how we're still seeing the effects that COVID-19 had us even in small ways. Eric decided that he was gonna put his hands to the plow and be consistent with this work. And now it's paid off with all of it on display. I was thinking about this with painting. It's like, you're, the, the process is inherently frustrating because what you're doing, taking all these different aspects of you know, composition and lighting and color, trying to bring them together as different facets of this thing until, until you're satisfied, mm -hmm. right? That means the entire process, you are dissatisfied until you're satisfied. Yeah. They don't call them tortured artists for nothing. Which means you're unhappy with it the whole time. Yeah. Pain seems to be the common theme in each artist's creative growth process. Which of all these is your is your personal favorite? I think probably it's it's a it's a tough call, but like one of these three. About midnight, getting to all my viewers' bedtime. My wife already came in and told me to go to bed, so I'm on strict orders. Gotta wrap this thing up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it inspires you to go create something. Make sure you check out Eric and all of the people that I mentioned today. I'll have all the links below the like button, of course. Thank you so much for coming with me to explore the mind behind these fantastic little tanks. Subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment if you wanna see more videos like this. There are a lot of cool people out there and I can't wait to meet them. You can also subscribe to my Patreon. Those listed here are the ones that made this video possible man that list just gets bigger every day um so if you want to be on this list as well and support me making more videos like this then head on over to patreon.com and if that's too much work honestly you could just send my mom an email and tell her that i'm doing a good job um that would that would be cool as well all right bye I think that's all I've got for tonight. So, thank you for watching, and uh, maybe you learned something. Maybe at least you were entertained, and uh, join me next week.